Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti. I am MrPhotographer.com. In this video, I'm going to use On One Photo Raw 2019 to process a wildlife image. We're going to process the image of this red-tailed hawk. We start out with a raw file that looks like this, and we're going to end up with something that looks like this. All right, we're going to be processing this image. This is a totally unprocessed raw file. And those of you that have watched my videos in the past where I've processed wildlife images know my philosophy. My philosophy is that I never want to misrepresent the animal. So I will just do enough processing to make the animal look like it looked when I saw it. Now, of course, in shooting raw, this image is rather flat and there's not a lot of detail. And that really was more colorful, a more colorful bird when I saw it. And it did have a lot more detail. So really, that's all I want to do. I don't want to do too much. So I'm in the browse module now. I'm going to hop over to the edit module. And I mentioned this is a raw file. It's not processed at all. If you're interested in the camera and lens information, the settings I used, and the exposure info, I'll have all of that in the description below the video. I often get asked, you know, what camera I was using, what lens, where I focused, stuff like that. You can find that all down below. Now, it's not processed at all. I'm just going to do it beginning to end. I prefer to crop early in my workflow. I mentioned that many times. So I'm going to crop it. Now, I don't like cropping wildlife images either. Uh, most often because I, I tend to print my wildlife images more than any other photo I might take. And I want as much resolution as possible. So I try to get as close to the animal as possible or use the longest lens I could afford usually to take a photo. In this case, it, it's pretty pretty good. I got close enough, but there is a lot of space at the top and it just doesn't look right. So I want to crop it. So I'm going to click on the crop tool and I often will print like an eight by 10. So we're going to go with the assumption that I'm going to print an eight by 10. So I'm going to use the four by five crop overlay and I'm going to just kind of pull it down a little bit because I do want the sign that the bird was standing on to be in. And I think that's pretty good right there. I think that's a good crop, as simple as that. So I'm going to click Apply. Now, uh, as far as the processing is concerned, I'm going to start out with tone and color at the very top. I'm not going to change the profile. I'm going to use the On One standard. And um, jumping down then to the white balance, I think I'm going to leave that as is. It was an overcast day, and it looks like that. I'm going to leave it as that. Um, so I'm just going to crop. I, I look at it. There's nothing that's usually I look at an image and I see what it needs the most, meaning I'll look at an image and it might be very dark or the shadows might be dark. I would jump right to shadows first, or maybe the highlights are very bright. I would jump right to highlights first. In this case, there's nothing on this image that's screaming out to me that it needs to be done. So I'm just going to kind of bring the sh uh, highlights in a little bit. And what I'm looking at is the brightest feathers I want to bring this down just till I could get some detail in those feathers. Sometimes I would zoom in and I would look and I'd look at the brightest feathers here and over here. And then I would just bring this down until I see some detail uh, in those areas and actually all the way down. Then I'll zoom back out just to verify and it looks okay. And there uh, isn't really any super dark areas. The midtones are perfect, I think. Um, I'll just kind of move the shadows around a little bit and I think the shadows right in the middle are fine. Um, I will get a white and black point. Um, I'm going to do that by holding the J key. J is in Jack. Click on the whites slider. I'm going to move that to the right until I see red coming through. That red is indicating that I'm clipping the highlights. When you're clipping the highlights that means you're removing all detail. They're so bright all the detail is obliterated. I want detail everywhere on this image. So I'm just going to back those off until all that red disappears right there. Similarly for the blacks, I'll hold the J key in, click on the blacks slider, and I'll pull that down. And when I start to clip blacks, you'll see that I'm starting to get some blue come through. 
Now, I don't want any clipping on the bird. I really want the bird to be perfect. Uh, now, those of you that saw or have seen me process landscape photos know that I like to clip the shadows a little bit. Uh, I like to have absolute black in my landscape images. My wildlife images, I don't want the animal clipped at all. So I'm going to just back that up till all that blue is gone, which is right about there. So I think that's a good uh, highlights, shadows, white and black. I didn't have to do anything with midtones. Um, I'm not going to add any structure. I'm not, there, it wasn't hazy. I'm not going to do that here. I prefer, as you know, to do that in the, uh, or in the um, I'm sorry, the effects module because we have the ability to use a mask. And I do a lot of masking on my wildlife shots. So I mentioned I'm not going to do anything with white balance. That's fine. So I'm really done with the tone and color tab. The details tab, I've mentioned a bazillion times. I prefer to do sharpening and noise reduction in the effects module. So I'm just going to undo that. It uh, did a lens. It found my lens. That's fine. And it doesn't need any transform. So I'm re ready right now to just jump right over into the effects module. Now... Uh, as I look at it, uh, like I said, I don't do a lot of processing technically when I do these images. But when I come in, I do think that it needs um, just kind of a color boost a little bit and a little bit more detail. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the Add Filter and I'm going to go to Dynamic Contrast right away. And you can see what that did to the bird. And it actually did a nice job uh, to the bird in here, but it's a little bit overdone up in here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave it just at the default values because I like what it did. But what I'm going to do is I am going to utilize the mask. And I'm going to get a what mask on it. I'm going to use the masking brush. I'm going to paint out the effect, but I'm only going to paint out a bit of the effect. So I'm going to keep the opacity at like 25 and then I'm going to get just a little larger brush and I just want to soften it up on the head of the bird because that's where it it seems to be like strongest and I don't like it now I could look at the mask by going down here in the lower left hand corner and clicking on this little icon there and you can see how it's not fully black and if I do another stroke you can see how I'm doubling it up so I'm I'm applying it little by little and I'm just gonna go over all that again just like that all right we're gonna turn it off so we could see what we actually did and I think that actually does look better now with that I don't want the background to have any dynamic contrast on it at all and I'm simply gonna paint it in uh, so what I'm gonna or paint it out I should say so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna move the opacity up to a hundred and I'm going to get a larger brush and I'm actually going to click right here and use the, um, I always forget what they call it, the perfect brush. I always try to call it something else. So that it looks for tone, color, and texture. And it will hopefully just brush the uh, away dynamic contrast on the background. So what I want to be careful is that that little minus sign in the middle of the brush does not touch our red-tailed hawk anywhere. We just want it on this background like that. Now it probably did a little bit. Let's look at the mask. We'll click on this little icon again. You could see it did a pretty good job actually. It's a little bit in there. So I could take it away from there. So what I'll do is I'll go to paint in mode and I'll turn off the perfect brush and I'll get a smaller brush and what I'll do is I'll just take it away from I like the sharpening or I should say the dynamic contrast in that area and I'll just go as close to the edge as I safely can and over here as well so you see the perfect brush isn't always perfect but it's easy enough to come in here and do it so you uh, if you don't understand what masking is doing is wherever it's black we've removed dynamic contrast from that area Wherever it's white, dynamic contrast is being applied at 100%. Wherever it's gray, it's somewhere between 0 and 100%. So you can see it's on the bird's head, but not as much, because you remember I painted that away. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go to paint out mode, and I'm going to get a larger brush, and I'm going to come in here and just do more of this background very quickly. So this, this uh, overlay 
helps. Now there are other different there are different types of mask overlays. If we go to the mask uh, uh, menu at the very top and we go down to the view mode, you can see I'm in grayscale. By default, I believe you'd be in um, that red this red mask, which you could maybe better utilize. Uh, the the grayscale mask is a little more um, obvious, but you don't see the image under it. So go like that, and we'll turn off the mask. I think that's good enough. So there, I have this masked on the bird. Now I want to do something with the color. It was you know a little more colorful than what it is. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to Add Filter. And I'm going to go to Color Enhancer. And really all I want to do is I want to go to Saturation. And I want to uh, crank that up. Quite a bit, actually. I think that the bird was, was you know, fairly colorful. I thought it was, at least, in my opinion. So I think that looks pretty good. And um, if I wanted that to be only on the bird, what I could do instead of drawing that mask all over again, I could go down to Dynamic Contrast and copy the mask, go back to, let it take a second to copy and render. And once I do that then, and once it does that, I'll go up to the Color Enhancer filter, and I will um, paste that mask onto the bird. So it's just taking a second. Now I'll go to the color enhancer. I will click on the mask and I'll click paste. And it will pick it will paste the exact mask on the color enhancer filter as well. So the color enhancer is only affecting the bird. And um what I should do is actually I went down here. I didn't want that. I want this. I made a mistake. You can see now there's a difference. I was wondering why it was so subtle because it was non-existent. So we're going to turn saturation up here. My apologies. Down here is when we're using color ranges. And obviously I wasn't using a color range at that moment. So we're going to turn up not that much, but you can see how it's mainly affecting the bird in the sign, not the background. So we'll turn that up quite a bit. And that looks pretty good. So color enhancer. And finally, I want to brighten up the uh, red tail hawk's eye. So I'm going to click on Add Filter, and I'm going to go to Tone Enhancer. And for this, I'm going to go right to Exposure and turn Exposure up. Now I'm just looking at the bird's eye. I'm not really looking anywhere else. And I'm going to turn Clarity up. But again, we're going to use a mask. So I'm going to click right here on this little mask icon. I'm going to invert the mask, and you can see it took the effect away from everywhere, but I want to paint it in on the hawk's eye. So we're going to go to paint in mode. We're going to be at 100% opacity, and I'm just simply going to click right in here and brighten up that bird's eye. Just like that. And there, look at the eye. There's before, and there's after. Before, after. Simple as that. Now, I'm going to finish it off. I'm going to add a vignette. I mentioned I don't do much. Now, I should add, I would do noise reduction quite often, but in this case, I use such a low ISO, and I had a camera that has great ISO performance, there really is no noise whatsoever. So I really don't have to worry about that. So I'm just going to go to Add Filter, and oops, not Vintage, sorry. I'm going to go to Add Filter, go to Vignette, and we're going to just pull it in from here a little bit. like that. I think that looks pretty good. So there is before and after. That's it. That's all I do when I process a wildlife image. As I mentioned before many times, I want to make it look like I saw it. I don't want to misrepresent the animal. That's the way I prefer to do it. I hope that helps you, especially those little tricks with masking, copying, and pasting masks. So you could apply your effects exactly where you want them and no place else. Thank you, everyone that watches my videos. I truly do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.